Sunday. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Now is the time for faith to pray, for fun, and to play. Stand up. Do a dance. Learn something new. Take a chance. Bring, Bring your, your Bible. Bible. There's, There's so much to do. do. Enjoy this special time made just for, for you. you. Thanks for joining Kids Kingdom with the New York City International Christian Church. Let's sing to God. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I keep clapping now. Sounds good. Huh. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, that sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's time to pray. Good morning, friends. Let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for my parents, my family, my teachers, and my friends. Please be with us today and help us enjoy lesson and service. Thank you so much for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. Story time in the Old Testament. After the fall, God banished Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Life was hard. Work was difficult, but God promised Eve that she would give birth to her own children. And soon it happened. Eve gave birth to a son and called him Cain. Cain was the firstborn. Then she had a second son and named him Abel. As the boys grew up, they showed interest in different things. Abel loved animals and became a shepherd. Cain, on the other hand, became a farmer and was growing plants and food for the family. Both Cain and Abel were supposed to pray to God and thank him for his provision. Abel loved God and it showed by his beautiful offer he brought. He gave God his best sheep as a sacrifice. Cain brought some of his crop, probably not even his best, and God loved Abel's offering more. When Cain saw this, he became very jealous and angry. God seemed to like Abel more than he did Cain, and this stirred up more hatred in Cain's heart. One day, Cain told Abel that they should go out into the field, 
Cain's heart was wicked, and his jealousy made him do a very foolish thing. He planned to hurt Abel. He planned to kill his own brother. While in the field, Cain fought with his brother and killed him. Cain's jealousy turned his anger into rage, and in a foolish act, he murdered his own flesh and blood. Cain forgot that God knew everything, even that which he did in secret. Now Cain was really in trouble. God spoke to Cain. Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Cain was scared. Did God know? I don't know, Cain lied to God. Am I supposed to guard my brother all the time? God was not fooled. What have you done? I know that you've killed your brother, Abel. God then cursed Cain and banished him. No longer would Cain be able to plant and harvest any crops, no matter how hard he worked. Even in this punishment, God protected Cain by placing a special mark on him. This mark meant that anyone who killed Cain would be severely punished. From that day on, Cain became a fugitive on the earth, settling in the land of Nod, far from the garden and far from God's pleasure. Cain's punishment would last the rest of his life. It's craft time, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us again for another amazing time. Our story today was really interesting. It was about two brothers, Cain and Abel. Now, do you remember what Abel did for a living? Yeah, he was a shepherd. And shepherds carry this really special stick called a shepherd's crook. And we're gonna make our very own today out of origami. And origami comes from Japan and it's an art of folding paper. So all we need today are two things. I need a piece of paper and I need some scissors. So the first thing we have to do is turn our paper from a rectangle into a square. So I'm gonna turn my paper long ways and I'm gonna take one corner and I'm gonna fold it to be flat with the other side of the paper. And I'm just gonna look to make sure that everything lines up nice. And then I'm going to put a crease. So I'm gonna push really hard. Now we have this extra piece of paper on the side, so we're gonna cut that off using our scissors. And now we made a square. That looks great. So we're gonna fold it into a big triangle like it was already. And again, we're making those creases. And then we're gonna fold it several times up like this. relatively small. And don't forget to make those creases. Good, let's do it again. Okay, and now I have this nice long stick. And so we have two more folds to make. I'm gonna put my stick down this way and I'm gonna fold it like an L. And then I'm gonna take this L and I'm gonna fold it one more time. And now I have a shepherd's crook, just like that. It's time for show and tell. Hey guys, I'm Taylor and I'm seven years old and I'm gonna be showing you guys one of my favorite things. And this is my bouncy ball and I like to play with it a lot. And it's really bouncy and it has like hearts all over it. And I love to catch it too. And like bouncy too, because it's a bouncy ball. 
That's why I like my name is my name is Maurice Brown. I'm 11 years old, and this is one of my favorite things. My basketball. Uh, I can shoot, dribble, lay up, dunk on small rims. But yeah, uh, I like that it has a lot of air. I can play well with this. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things. Sing to God. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that be. To your call, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over. Story time in the New Testament. Peter had recently confessed, and James and John agreed, that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. They imagined the Messiah as a king who would destroy their enemies and establish his kingdom. But it was neither the time nor the place for that kind of conquest. So Jesus began showing his disciples a very different part of God's salvation plan. How he would be taken to the city, not to be crowned king, but to suffer and die. Such distressing news left them confused and disheartened as they followed Jesus up the mountain to pray. When prayer was needed the most, the disciples felt too discouraged to pray and fell asleep instead perhaps to dream of the perfect kingdom that now seemed out of reach. They did not understand that without the shedding of his blood, there would be no forgiveness of sins, and without forgiveness, the deadly curse of sin and eternal death would continue to rule. They did not understand, so they slept. A moment later, their dreams were interrupted, and they awoke to a much greater vision. 
Jesus was standing before them with a brightness as brilliant as the sun itself. His clothes glowed the brightest white imaginable. On either side of Jesus stood Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the great prophet, and they were all talking together. The disciples were astounded and amazed that they were in the presence of Moses, whom God knew face to face, and Elijah, who had once called God's fire down from heaven. When Moses and Elijah were about to leave, Peter exclaimed to Jesus, Don't leave. Let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what he was saying. He just wanted the glory of this moment to last forever. But as the words left Peter's mouth, he was interrupted by the voice of God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Jesus was not just another prophet or teacher. He was the very son of God. Hear him, the father said. The disciples fell with their faces to the ground in fear. God had spoken directly to them. Jesus stepped over to the disciples and gently touched them. Stand and do not be afraid, he said. They looked up to see that Jesus was now standing alone, his glory once again covered in humanity. Do not tell anyone about this until after the resurrection, he cautioned them. They would soon see their Messiah suffer and die, but by the power of his resurrection, they would also witness the kingdom of God breaking into human history. Let's get up and move around. Hello again, welcome back, happy Sunday. Let us exercise, but before we need to review, right? There was three people who saw something amazing, right? Who were they? There were three disciples. It was Peter, James, and John. Good job. And they saw Jesus in all his splendor, right? In all his uh, just glory. And he was bright as the sun, right? And uh, but there was two more people with Jesus. It was Moses and Elijah, yes, and yeah, it has to be such an amazing experience for the disciples that they don't know what to do. They had no clue, but one thing they got was vision, right? Okay, so let us begin. I must stand up because I was kneeling down to see you. So we're gonna do 10 jumping jacks, okay? Go with me. Ready, set, go. One, two. Now we're gonna jump like a frog for 10 times, okay? Ready? Go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're gonna run like a, li like a lion for 10 seconds, okay? Ready, set, go! You are next week. Okay, time to test that knowledge. It's time for Bible quiz. It's time for the Bible quiz. What is the eighth commandment? Do not steal, do not lie, or do not covet. These are all great principles, but which one is the eighth commandment? Do not steal. In the wilderness, God provided water from a well, a rock, or a cloud. What does that look like right there? Hmm. We sure do love clues. A rock. Which animal spoke to Balaam? A lion, an eagle, or a donkey? 
<laughs> he was surprised that it was a donkey. Where did Rahab live? Jerusalem, Jericho, or Jezreel? Remember the walls of Jericho. What river did Joshua cross? The Tigris, the Jordan, or the Euphrates? That is very impressive. What did she say? The Jordan River. Whose son did Elijah raise to life? The widow, the baker, or the prophetess? The widow. Elijah called down fire on what mountain? Sinai, Carmel, or Ararat? Carmel. And that was our last question for the Bible quiz. Congratulations, I'm sure you did great. If you're looking for more fun based on today's lesson, please click the link below for more activities. We can't wait to see you again next Sunday. And don't forget, Jesus loves you. See you next week.